morning students uh, give me one minute that you know i connect my ipad to the screen till then we will wait for the other students to join in so everybody hi 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 good morning good morning good morning Okay, I'm having some technical difficulties in connecting my iPad to my screen. But anyways, let's start with today's session. So I'll see for the next five minutes if I can connect my iPad to the screen. Now, so till now we have discussed a couple of aspects of chapter three. So I said we are going to divide chapter three into three different parts. So we already discussed part one. We already discussed part one of chapter three. Now, in today's class, we'll be discussing the second part. Though it is the third class what we are going to have, but it is the second part what we are going to discuss. And this is the most important part in your entire EIS syllabus. EIS, you can only understand if you understand this part. If you don't understand this, then you don't understand the subject at all. Now, today we are going to talk about something called as controls. We are going to talk about something called as controls now till last year teaching controls was a difficult task for me because students could you know easily would not understand what is the importance of having control in any organization but after this corona after this covid explaining what is control has become super easy i will tell you how it so in chapter number 3 we are left with 55 more questions okay we have still 55 more questions to discuss discuss so this 55 question, I'm going to divide it into two parts. In today's class, we'll discuss 25 questions. And in tomorrow's class, that is the next class, not exactly tomorrow, in the next class, we'll talk about the remaining 30 questions. Now, even in this question, there are certain general question and then there are certain technical or specific question. A general question could be as simple as, how do you prevent fire accident in your organization? Now, you don't want faculty to tell you that how do you prevent a fire or accident in your organization a general person can answer this question uh, answer now how can you prevent a fire accident you will say we will have a fire extinguisher we will use proper wiring we will use proper electricity connection all those things so i am not going to deal specifically into those questions so when i say i'm going to deal with 25 questions i will try skipping or you know go uh, move fast in those general questions and discuss these specific questions in details. Now, whatever the question you might have, you are supposed to put it in the comment box. Maybe after every question, I will look into the comment box or maybe at the end, I will look into the comment box. Be rest assured, I'm going to answer all the questions which are put in the comment box before one o'clock because at one o'clock, I'm going to end this today's session. Maybe if there are some questions, if it is unanswered, I may take session for 10 more minutes. That's it, okay? Okay, let me once again reconnecting my iPad. Okay. So can you see my iPad? Can you see the notes once again? Can you see the notes? If yes, then can you put it in the comment box? I'll wait for your answer. Okay, good. So I've received one confirmation from the student saying that they can see my notes. So I hope that you also have these notes along with you. So we'll be referring these notes for the 
discussion if you don't have this notes download it from one pin application okay so now even before i start with question number 1 i want to take you to question number 3 this is explain the meaning of the term what do you mean by what do you mean by control what do you mean by control and what do you mean by control objective now what is control now after this covid you know after the corona disease suddenly all the organization said employees you don't come to office you don't come to factory now you tell me if there is a ca office if there is a ca office what is the objective of the ca office now the first objective that is a business objective what i'm talking about the objective is to do the work of the client it could be income tax return filing it could be gst filing it could be some company compliances corporate compliances it could be some other work so business objective of a ca office is to do the work and generate revenue now why revenue is important revenue is important for paying of salaries paying of bills paying of other expenses so business objective is generating revenue by doing the work now after corona came in what did all the officers said employees you don't come to the office you don't come to the office now if employees are not coming to the office you tell me whether business objectives will be achieved Just will not be achieved. Why? Because if employees are not at office, then how is the work going to happen? So, just because you are making your employees sit at home, is it what control is? So, I repeat my question: Does control means making your employees sit at home? Is it what control is? I want your answer. What do you think? Is it what control is? okay so now i'll tell you see the definition of control is divided into two parts okay first one is they are saying the business objective the business objective has to be achieved or business objective will be achieved now what is the business objective that is doing the work completing the work generating bills that is the business objective next at the same time undesirable events are prevented detected corrected okay undesirable events are prevented detected or corrected now let me again give the example of code itself so now after corona came in all the organization said all employees you work from home now when they are asking their employees to work from home what are they really hinting towards they are saying look you stay at home and you do the work so if you are staying at home and doing the work okay then business objectives will be achieved correct the work will be completed and the company can bill their customers so business objective is achieved at the same time undesirable events what is undesirable event that is if you are bringing your employee to the organization then if all the employees are put in put in one premise or one company or one factory there is high chance of you know covid spreading that is where you are making them sit at home you are making them to work from home so that your business objective will be achieved at the same time undesirable events are either prevented or detected or corrected sir what are these three things what is preventing what is detecting what is correcting we will discuss in the further questions but basically what do you mean by control in the examiner if ask this then the answer should be control is defined as it is policies procedures and practices these are three p's which are the three p's policies procedures and practices of an enterprise structure that are designed to provide reasonable assurance okay that is reasonable assurance what do you mean by reasonable assurance see reasonable assurance means you think that if employees are at home and they are working from home that they will not catch covid okay but does it mean that if an employee is working from home he will never catch covid no because he may go to nearby shop he may go to his neighbor and talk or in his family somebody else is going out coming so there is a possibility that he will still get covid even if it is home but company is trying to do the its best to give a reasonable assurance okay not an absolute assurance reasonable assurance saying that if you are sitting at home there is a high chance that you will be safe okay so this is what control is next now what do you mean by control objective now 
organization have control okay now what are the objectives of having that control let me give one very simple example so that you can start understanding what do you mean by control objective now go back to your childhood go back to your primary so in primary let's say one day you decided let me not go to school okay let me not go to school so you did not even tell your parents you just you know went out at your house wearing all your uniform but did not go to school you just sat in bus stand from morning to evening then you came back home now next day when you go to school can you directly go and sit in your class in the school in which i studied they asked for something called as leave letter or leave note or some document in which you know i write the reason why i was absent then my parents sign it now this i had to show it to my class teacher before i entered my class now this was a control so don't think that control is something you know hyper technical super technical that you know only in companies they follow this was everywhere there so this was put in place why because if this control system was not there then student would have bunked class whenever he wanted that is where they said whenever a student is absent next day when he comes he is supposed to get a leave note so this is a control now why they have this control what is the objective of having this control so when the school said get the leave letter what is the objective of this that is this answer okay the first answer is authorization now what is authorization authorization means all transactions are approved by responsible person in accordance with their specific or general authority before the transaction is recorded for example let's say now the same primary example you go with your leave note now this leave note can you just show to your friend and can your friend say yeah come sit in the class no this has to be authorized or permitted by your class teacher only then you can go and sit so if you have put proper control then there is a proper authorization in the organization let us uh, let us go to the company corporate uh, corporate example and understand this so even in a corporate or even in a larger company even if you want to take some leave you need an approval from the hr only then you can take the leave so these are all the controls which are put in the organization so that there is a proper authorization procedure in the organization then there is there is couple of next points i'm going to club it and take it together okay what one is completeness accuracy validity now what are these points let's talk about one uh, supermarket now you tell me what is the difference what you see okay when you go to supermarket and purchase let's say you purchase some soap you purchase some chocolate and you go to your neighbor local kirana store and purchase the same thing item in both the places you get but if you look at it in supermarket there is more control now what is this control i'll tell you now how do you purchase in supermarket so you have that your trolley what uh, or a shopping cart what you call it as so you put all the items in that cart then you take it to the billing counter so in the billing counter the lady or the guy in the billing counter what do they do they scan each and every item okay so they don't write it manually if they write it manually there is a possibility there is a possibility that one item may not get billed human error but in supermarket that possibility is not there why because it is not human who is manually writing and doing the totaling it is the system what is doing the totaling so one is all the transactions are recorded in the system it is completeness all the items which are gone out of the organization is recorded in their com computer that is what completeness is all about accuracy now accuracy is all about totaling okay the so in manual totaling there might be a possibility that the kirana owner may make some mistake sometimes he may charge less sometimes he may charge more also the totaling error but the system should not do any mistake okay so there is a high accuracy so if you have proper controls put in place there is a proper accuracy in the organization then validity now what is validity validity mean all recorded transaction fairly represent economic events that actually occurred i'll give an example same supermarket example so when you go and you give 10 products okay soaps chocolates some other items when you give it to that lady now when she is scanning she can only add some information to the system i'll give an example so 
let us say today what is the date today today is 3rd of october so if you are going to make some purchase on 3rd of october she is going to just scan it okay and the invoice is automatically printed and on the invoice there is date okay now can she change the date can she instead of writing 3rd of october can she write tomorrow's date 4th of october not possible can she write yesterday's date and say this sale happened on 2nd of october no because system does not allow it system automatically prints today's date but in kirana store can kirana store owner can he give you tomorrow's bill he can because he is manually writing can he give yesterday's bill can okay so if you have proper controls in your organization then all the transactions will have validity validity means all recorded transaction fairly represents the economic events that actually occurred that is on third the sale is happening then the third the invoice will be printed not of second not of fourth so this can be achieved by having controls in your organization then physical safeguards and securities now again let's go to shopping mall so in shopping mall you know even if you are uh, you know taking some let's say cloth okay you want to try out one shirt so when you take that shirt to the dressing room that shirt has one uh, one device okay one magnetic device what they have that you can't open that you can't open okay so now why do they have that magnetic device in that shirt is because let us say that you fold that shirt and you put it in your pocket and you just walk out of the organization what happens okay, there is a sensor in it so when you're walking out the sensor will you know make some noise so if you have proper control in your organization this is also one control so again i'm repeating control is the simplest thing okay so why do you have this control that magnetic device in those clothing apparels because they want to have physical safeguard and security for their products next is error handling now what is this error handling let us say that there is a supermarket there is a supermarket and on day beginning let's say there is a, so there is 100 bags of rice in that supermarket now every time somebody puts that bag of rice in their cart and goes to the billing counter the billing lady will record this transaction so opening stock was 100 in the billing machine there is a Uh, there is record of 20 rice bags being sold so at the end of the day there had to be 80 rice bags but when you do the physical stock take you only have 75 rice bags that means five rice bags are missing okay now this particular information has to be reported to somebody let's say some inventory manager he will come and he will check whether this five bags are really missing or not how did this missing happen whether it is a system error whether did you write opening stock wrong so all these things you know makes employees more responsible towards the organization now think from a normal kirana store that kirana store guy has no idea what was the opening stock what was sold what is the closing stock so even if some employees are taking two rice bag home he will not know okay so this is the objective of having control in your organization next one is segregation of duties so this one point very important you need to understand what is the segregation of duties segregation of duties means as long as there is humans who are involved in an organization there is always a possibility of fraud always a possibility of fraud why because humans are not uh, you know they keep changing on a probably you know daily basis or a weekly basis or a monthly basis depending on a circumstance okay let me give one very simple example to you let's say there is an employee who is very honest okay now that is when he joined the organization but gradually he dreams of buying a bigger house now with his salary package he cannot buy a bigger house so what is he going to do he may try to defraud the organization in which he is working and to take some benefit out of it so organization should always do segregation of duties that is one simple task you divide between two different people in the previous class we took the same example of having the locker key in the bank okay so if you give the locker key of the bank to only one person there is always a possibility that one day he decides that i am tired of this work i want to become rich overnight so what is he going to do he is going to open take the money out go home so what are you going to do instead of having only one lock you are have going to have two different locks one lock you are giving to manager and one more lock you are going to give it to let's say cashier or assistant manager now you may also have a question saying that sir what if both decide to defraud the bank that time you can't do anything okay 
So controls are just to provide the reasonable assurance, not absolute assurance. That is what I told. Reasonable assurance means if you give key to one person, it is highly risky. If you give key to two people, then at least there is a possibility that there won't be much fraud. But there is, if both both the people decide that, you know, let's share 50-50, then you can't control it. Okay. So that is question number three for us. Now, let's go to outline the need for IS control in IS audit. Okay. This is a question, a very important question. So mark that this as an important question. Normally, it comes for examination. Now, They are talking about outline the need for IS controls and yes audit. Now there are two words which often students get confused with. What do you mean by IS control and what do you mean by IS audit? These two things are different. Now what is IS? IS stands for information system. Now what is information? We discussed in a previous class. Information system means five things. Which are these five things? People, hardware, software, data and network in your organization. Okay. Now everything is important. People is important. People is important. Hardware is important. Software is important. Data is important. Network is important. Now people is important. For example, in COVID, they have realized that employees are the biggest resource for the organization. People. So they say, don't, don't come to a company. You work from home. Okay. This is an IS control. Okay. Talking about hardware. Okay. So Let's say there are there is a company which has 100 computers in that company. So organization should ensure that this com these computers are safe. Employees are not taking to their home. Okay. So there is again, there are ways that you can control the software. There are ways you can control your data. You can control your network. Everything put together, you call it as IS control. So organization is to protect these, all the five things. But how far they are efficient in controlling this will be known by an audit, something called as IS audit. So there is an IS auditor who comes and checks whether data is safe, whether hardware is safe, software is safe, people are safe. Okay. So about this, we will learn. Okay. IS audit, we will learn in our next class, not in today's class. But the question is outline the need. Okay. Outline the need of having IS control and IS audit. Two question why should you have is control and why you should have is audit simple thing that is in any organization information is the principal asset okay let me give one very simple example to you so that you can understand it in a better way now let us say i am uh, flip cart okay i am flip cart so i have huge data of my customers huge data of my customers. Now, when I say data of my customers, it could be their phone numbers. It could be their addresses. Remember, whenever you purchase from Flipkart, these are the details what you store there. They have your name. They have your phone number. They have your address. They have your email ID. They have your password for the Flipkart account. They have your bank account details. They have your debit card numbers. They have your credit card numbers. They have your net banking details. So all these details is there with Flipkart. Now, if Flipkart is not taking care of this information. And if this information falls into some wrong hand, then you will stop using Flipkart. Okay. Because you will not trust that organization anymore. So organization has to properly take care of your data. Okay. How can they do it? By having proper IS control. Now, who checks whether IS control is proper or not? IS auditor. So both you need to have. You need to have control. At the same time, you also need to get it audited. Now, next one is, Incorrect decision making. Now, what is this incorrect decision making? Let me give an example so that you understand it. Say, how do you know a business is profitable or a loss making? Simple question I'm asking you for a commerce student. How do you know whether a business is a profitable business or a loss making business? So you may say that uh, by preparing their profit and loss account, by preparing their balance sheet. So in the profit and loss account, it, if it shows it is profit, then you say, okay, business is profit making. Okay. Now my question is, how do you prepare a profit and loss account? I will be like, 
profit and loss account is prepared maybe after preparing trial balance maybe by preparing ledgers how do you prepare ledger accounts from journal entries now the question is so how do you get these journal entries so there is a bookkeeping which happens so everything is connected so from bookkeeping to profit and loss account it is chain so if bookkeeping goes wrong okay if initial transaction goes wrong the way you record the initial transaction goes wrong your profit and loss account will go wrong so there might be a possibility that you are you are actually recording the wrong entries and because of which because of which your profit and loss account is showing the wrong picture okay maybe your business is loss making maybe your business is loss making but you don't have proper controls put in place that is where your profit and loss account is showing profit so what are you going to decide you are saying my business is making profit let me continue as it is okay so if you don't have proper information your final decision making will become wrong so this is where you are supposed to have controls in your organization so by controls what are you going to achieve all the transaction will be completely recorded in your system there will be accuracy there will be validity everything will be there next one more objective is value of it resources now what does it mean let's say that there is an organization let's say there is an organization which has so many computers now if they don't have a proper control employee may take computer and go home and he may never come back okay that is where the companies should be very very careful about their it resources because these are very very expensive okay the simple point next is cost of data loss now what is cost of data loss that means let's say flipkart okay loses its customers data then what customers are going to do file a case against the company now company to defend itself has to incur lot of legal expenditure so this, this is a very general question okay so i am not going in detail i am expecting you to just go through it read it and finalize it next is cost of computer abuse now you might have heard something called as ransomware so in recently in germany it happened so what happened was uh, some hacker hacked the, the hospital in germany okay by putting some ransomware so what actually happened is all the system suddenly became off so when i say system entire hospital turned off so all the patients who were in ventilator who were in icu died okay so you need to understand we are not just talking about you know hacking flipkart hacking amazon we are also talking about hacking hospitals hacking militaries uh, you know hacks are happening all around the world okay so the cost of this computer abuse is too much sometimes in financial norm financial terms and sometimes in uh in terms of life of the patient next is cost of computer error now this is the same point what we discussed here as well that is no cost of computer error and incorrect decision making these points are interconnected then maintenance of privacy now when hospital collects the patient data it is one of the sensitive information okay now if hospitals do not have enough controls put in place and let us say that there is one patient comes in and they do the testing of that patient and let's say that that patient is diagnosed with cancer now where are they going to store this information let us say hospital saves this information in some cloud okay in some database now if somebody else gets this database and he gets to know okay these are all the patients who have cancer and he puts in some facebook okay now patient will suffer mentally okay so we are not just talking about a financial loss we are also talking about there are so many other losses which a party may encounter if controls are not there in the organization next one is <coughs> control devolution of computer use this is a very general point they are saying as and when the technology changes we also need to upgrade ourselves if technology changes and if you are not upgrading ourselves then and if you are using old system for example in the banks okay so now what we have let's say we have windows 10 okay if you are talking about windows system but there are banks which are still using windows xp windows vista those old computers and the bank people are very rigid they will say we will not use the new system our old system is working properly now the microsoft has stopped rule security updates for those old computers so those old computers are vulnerable vulnerable for the attacks 
So if you don't have proper control in your organization, then what happens? You will still end up using the old computers, old systems with no proper security patches, security updates, and your system is vulnerable to the attacks. So they are saying that in an organization, you need to have controls because of following reasons. And at the same time, they're also saying you need to get your controls audited because of the following reasons. Very simple question. Uh, sir, WannaCry is a ransomware? Yes, WannaCry is a ransomware. Now again, for the students who are wondering what is ransomware, see, what is ransom? Ransom means if I kidnap you, okay, if I kidnap you and I call your, you know, I call your home and say, if you want me to release this boy or this girl, pay me 10 lakh rupees, something called as ransom. Okay, so in, in computer world, what the hackers do is, let's say in your phone, there is a lot of data, there is a lot of photos what you have of your family, of your friends, there is a lot of other details what you have in your mobile phone. So what do I do is I don't delete those details. What do I do is I encrypt those details, I lock those details. I lock your phone and I will say, if you want to unlock your phone, give me this much amount of money. That is called as ransomware. Okay, so all these hospitals were hit with this ransomware and they demanded millions of rupees to, uh, you know, unlock those files. Next, list some critical control aspects which are lacking in a computerized environment. This is very interesting question. Let's, uh, let's understand with the help of an example. Okay, now take this example in a very lighter note just for the purpose of studies. See, in any organization, all the decisions are made by senior officers, or I call it as management. Now, this management are always, always old people. There are some exceptions, young entrepreneurs and all. But normally, if I'm talking about who is the CEO of the organization or who is the, you know, who is heading the organization, board of directors and all, normally these people are 55 year old, 60 year old, 65 year old. That is, they're born in 1960s, 1970s. Back then, there was no much computer knowledge, computer usage. So these people don't have much of computer idea. So there was this, uh, I believe, some police officer, okay, some senior ranked police officer who was very active on Twitter. Okay, so all the statements, everything, you know, he would issue using Twitter. He would tweet it and people would follow it. So this person was using Twitter to communicate with the general public. That is the one aspect. So this, this officer knew that if I have to talk to public at large, Twitter is the one place. Now at the same time, in Twitter, there are good content as well as there is bad content as well. Okay. Now, this police officer had liked some of the, some photos, okay, some sort of photos. But this officer did not know that when he likes a photo, all his followers can see that he liked that photo. He thought it is personal, only he gets to know it. This he had done some years back when he was not a senior officer. What happened later is, you know, later he, when he got promoted to the, so, you know, senior officer post, some person went to his old timeline and they could see that, you know, this officer had liked all these photos. So they took a screenshot of it and they put it in Twitter. Now this senior officer does not understand head and tail of what actually happened. So he released a statement saying that my Twitter account is partially hacked. Now what is partially hacked? He is like everything what posted to the public that I am doing, but the, the person who is liking these photos, it is not me. Okay, so this officer does not understand that there is nothing called as partial hacking. Either it is completely hacked or not completely hacked. Okay, so now, this is just and take this as an example. Now, why I'm saying this is because the senior officers or senior management people they do not really understand. They do not really understand what are the uh, what are the consequences of using system in a wrong way. Okay, they don't understand what happens if they don't protect the data. What happens when they don't protect the privacy? Okay, so this is that question. List some critical control aspects which are lacking in a computerized environment. See, earlier days, earlier days, entire operation used to happen within the premise. Now, work from home is also happening. That is, you no know, companies some, somewhere in abroad, employees were sitting in rural village in India, and he, they are, this employee is working for that company, which is there in abroad. Okay. So, this computerized environment has changed entire employment dynamics. 
now if you don't have proper control what is going to happen huge consequence so they are talking about why we are not having proper control in the organization in the computerized environment first point is lack of management understanding about is risk and related control management doesn't even understand okay the same police officer example what i am giving they don't understand the risk the hospital realized that they were hit with the ransomware and all the day you know the system were shut down they did not even realize that this can happen and a patient can die because of a hacker who is sitting at russia okay that is the first point second point is absence or inadequate is control framework let us say in some organization and somebody says let us have some is control but again unless you take the help of a professional there is always possibility that it is inadequate okay you have policies but it is still inadequate next absence of weak general control and is control so what is this general control is control later part okay i don't want to talk about it now because there is a huge discussion that we'll make later next again not just the management okay when we talk about seniors don't understand doesn't mean that the staffs do understand very well no even they don't know best example could be the password policies okay so after this class what i want you to do is i want you to go to this website okay that is just put it in google have i been pawn okay have i been pawn that is i'll take it to that website one second have i been pawn so this is the website and i want you to put your email id okay whatever your email id is i want you to put your email id and i want you to check whether you are pawn so pawn means whether your email id has ever been Uh, you know hacked by somebody so you will get to know okay not 100 percentage you will get to know but if it uh, if it did happen you will get to know you can put your uh, email id or you can put your password and you can check whether you know this password is already hacked or not somebody already has this password or not try this okay now why am i saying this is because the employees are you know they also don't have enough uh, information system knowledge for example you tell me whether your gmail password whether your facebook password whether your instagram password are one and the same or or are three things different if one and the same then if your gmail is somehow hacked your facebook can be hacked your instagram can be hacked and there are people who just have one email id one password for everything because they say i don't remember i keep forgetting and there are also people who never change their password gmail password somewhere in 10th standard you create a gmail account then you are even you are in your ca winter you don't change it it is still one and the same these are all risk okay these are all the risk that we see we call it as is risk now this is because management does not understand even employees don't understand now there was one bank okay so there was one bank and this bank they hired one professional and this professional said we'll have a robust is policy information security policy so what we are going to do is we are going to implement a very strong password policy in which every 10 days employees are you know compulsorily should change their pin every 10 days they have to change the pin now these employees see one first 10 days they remembered one password again 10 days it was changed they remembered new password again they remembered new password but over period of time they felt it is very difficult to remember the password so what they did is they wrote it on a piece of paper and they sticked it to their monitor saying that you know your recent current password is this now you tell me if somebody is writing their password and sticking to their screen what is the purpose of changing the password once in 10 days so even the manager does not understand even the employees don't understand lack of control features or their implementation in highly technological driven environments now a classic example could be of uh, uh, you know this banks getting merged you know now uh, let's say syndicate bank and kendra merge became kendra bank corporation bank and union bank became union bank vijaya bank and bank of baroda became bank of baroda so these banks are getting merged so all the data of these old banks should be merged with the new bank but even if you do smallest of the smallest mistake the it it can create a chaos in the organization okay next the same that is sixth and seventh point same explanation either that the 
technology is implemented wrongly or there is inadequate security functionalities so because of all these things we have what is the question we have these are all the things which are lacking in a computerized environment these are the specific questions now fourth question is very general in nature so they are like how do you classify it control so whenever i'm talking about it control i am talking about information technology control okay it refers to information technology control so they are categorizing the control on the basis of functional nature okay this is not there in your syllabus so you don't have to study this part now we have these three things what is on the basis of objectives you have preventive control detective control corrective control compensatory control you don't have it in detail this but this preventive detective corrective are major next is based on nature of is resources we have environmental control physical control logical access control now why about this we will talk in detail don't worry and based on functions we have managerial control and application control we will talk about it now the first question important question mark this as important briefly explain the classification of it control based on objectives of objectives control based on objective Con sorry wait let me read the question again briefly explain the classification of it controls based on objectives of control <clears throat> now so we have three things one is preventive control one is detective control and one is corrective control now what are these things now let's say an organization wants to <coughs> bring the employees into the organization right okay that is post corona now whenever employees are going to the offices it is a possibility that a person may have fever or may have you know some other corona symptoms now how can an organization how can an organization stop those people from entering the organization that is at the entrance there will be some person and you know holding that gun they will check your temperature and if you have fever they will send you back if you don't have fever they will get you inside so that control is something called as preventive control now so what is this preventive control preventive control means it prevents a mishap it prevents a undesirable event we can have we, let us look at the examples now in computers in computers we can have you know proper antivirus software now why do you have this antivirus software so that the wrong files does not get downloaded the wrong files does not get installed when i say wrong files i'm talking about viruses i'm talking about malware so that is a preventive control you put in place you may have firewalls now what is this firewalls firewalls means it is a it is a software it is a mixture of hardware and software which protects your organization's computer from a outside computer or outside attack we will talk about much in detail later now next one is <clears throat> training your staffs that is a preventive control because if staffs are not trained they will make all the mistakes so you properly train your staff so whenever you join any organization for the first 3 4 months they train you rigorously why that is a preventive control so that if you are trained properly they expect that you will not make mistakes but if they don't train you then you will end up making mistakes that is where we have went controls again segregation of duties giving two keys to different different officers again it is a preventive control very general point now what is detective control now detective control means you know these are the this, uh, these are the control which are designed to detect errors or omissions or malicious acts that occur and report the occurrence now for example let us say that uh, you are flipkart and you have all the data of your customers all the data of your customers now somebody tried to hack in though you had the best system put in place they they successfully hacked your computers now if you don't have a proper detective controls put in place you know then you don't know that somebody hacked into your system and they stole all the details now if you knew that somebody hacked then you could inform your customer saying that there is a breach of database in you know, all your passwords these things are stole please change your password or please block your cards you can inform your customers but if you don't have a detective control then you cannot inform your customers now, this is hyper technical example sir can we have a very simple example obviously yes say 
there is an organization. So they have smoke detectors. Now, why do they have the smoke detector is because if there is a fire incident, if there is a fire accident, the smoke detectors will detect that, you know, there is a fire and then the siren will be activated. That is a detective control. Very simple point. Next, what is this corrective control? Now, corrective control means you have done something. Okay. Let us say the employees come into your organization. So 10 employees are working on, in the same office and one employee got COVID. Okay. Now, what are you supposed to do? You are supposed to do something called as, you have to supposed to take something called as corrective action. So what is the corrective action? Corrective action is putting everybody in isolation, everybody in quarantine. Okay. So this is a corrective control. So now, preventive control will prevent an incident. Detective control will detect an incident and corrective controls will correct the incident. Now, antivirus is all, it is sometimes it is preventive, sometimes it is detective, sometimes it is corrective. Example could be antivirus will prevent the virus from being downloaded. If virus somehow is downloaded, then antivirus will detect there is a virus in the system. Then if there is, if it detects, then your antivirus only will delete that virus from your system. That is a corrective control. Okay. Now, again, there are some examples. Please go through these examples. The next point is briefly explain the classification of IT controls based on nature of IS resources. Okay. I'll explain this very simple point. This is. Now, if you are going to talk about, now I'll say, listen, let's say I give you a suitcase. I give you a suitcase and which has, let's say 10 crore rupees cash in it. Okay. It has 10 crore rupees cash in it. And I will say, if you protect this for 30 days, okay. If you protect this for 30 days on 31st day, this entire money is yours. Okay, so you understood my offer. I am giving you a suitcase which has 10 crore rupees and I am saying for 30 days you need to protect this. And if you can protect this for 30 days, then on the 31st day, this entire 10 crore is yours. Now you tell me, what are the dangers? What are the, what are your thought process? When I give you the suitcase of 10 crore rupees, what do you think, what may happen by which you can lose this 10 crore rupees? Now, one thing is, there is a, environmental damage which can happen. Now, what is this environmental damage? For example, let us say that you did not tell anybody you took this 10 crore rupees kept under your bed. And you are like, if I don't tell anybody, nobody will get to know. And this 10 crore rupees will be mine after 30 days. But let's say it suddenly started raining, rain very heavily. Okay. And it started flooding in. All your assets are gone. One possibility. Second possibility is there is high lightning and thunder and because of which, you know, all your electricity, everything gets, uh, you know, uh, there is a, a power spike and then there is short circuit, then there is a fire accident. So again, you lose your 10 crore rupees. So these are all not in your control. These are not in your control. These are all environmental issues. What are the environmental issues? Flood or it could be tsunami or it could be thundering. It could be power spikes, not in your control. So these are the risks which is posed by the environment. Then there are some risks which are posed by humans. For example, robbers. Okay. So if somebody gets to know, the thieves will come, robbers will come, your neighbors will come, everybody will come and try to take that money. So this type of, uh, so if it is human, then we call them, we can protect our assets by having proper physical access control. So what is a proper physical access control? So you can put this 10 crore rupees in one room and you can properly lock it. Okay, this is a physical access control. But if you put this 10, 10 crore rupees in a room and lock it, can you protect it from tsunami? No. Okay, because it is environmental danger. So whenever you think of an organization, you need to understand that your customer data or your hardware, your software, your people are this 10 crore rupees. Now the question is, how do you protect this, the your asset from a outside world. So you, uh, you segregate these uh, controls into environmental controls, physical access control, logical access control. Now, what is logical access control? Logical access control is 
let's say this 10 crore rupees you decided that if i have in a suitcase that is risky so what are you going to do you are going to deposit it to bank so bank will say sir this is your net banking id and password so they will give you your id password of internet banking now if somebody gets know your internet id back uh, internet id and password he need not actually steal your physical cash all that he can do is he can directly transfer from your account to his account so this is not a this you can't protect by having a strong door or a strong key okay so this is something called as logical access control we will talk more about it we will talk more about it later first let us talk about environmental controls now environmental control i said this is beyond your uh, this is beyond your control okay that is what we call it as environmental control it could be because of fire accident because of electrical exposure because of water damage or because of pollution damage what about this pollution damage because we understand fire accident yes we may lose our all the assets electrical exposures yes water damage yes tsunami all this happens i may lose the what do i say all the data in my organization but what about pollution damage see all this computer server room and all if it gets a lot of dusty okay if it gets dusty then you may lose your expensive servers and other systems and again this is a very general question what you have is what are the special precautions to be taken for protection of it systems from fire how do you protect your organization from fire so at the very beginning i said you know there are some general questions i am not going to deal with it just read these things as in how do you protect your organization from fire maybe you know you will start having this havels why no i don't know i have just seen those advertisement i am not very sure on those things Uh, you know you will have better wiring you will have proper paneling you will you know use less wood and plastic in the computer rooms because those are prone to more fire accident and use a gas based fire suppression system because if your computer catches fire if you put water whether you put water or fire both your computer is gone so you need to use some gas based fire suppression system or powder based fire suppression system Now, what are the special precautions to be taken for protection of IT systems from electric shock or spikes? Now, again, you can use proper UPS or generator, or uh, you can use better wires. Again, again, very simple points. Really. Now, now this is where we are discussing in details. Outline the various categories of physical access control. Now, let us say you have your organization which has. you know expensive computers in it very secret data in those organization so how are you protecting your organization from the physical danger okay from the physical danger or let us say that you are a hospital okay you are a hospital and you have very sensitive assets that is you know there are patients who are there in icu who are there in mc uh, micu now how are you going to protect them now they are saying first one is perimeter fencing okay so this example what we are taking we are taking the example of a hospital and i am asking how do you protect the patients within the hospital now one is perimeter fencing that is the hospital will have a compound yes always a big compound they will have that is the first control next one is there are video cameras everywhere there are video cameras so even if you are jumping at compound they will get to know that is a second point next one is controlled visitors access so if a patient is sleeping inside his ward randomly anybody cannot walk inside so there is a controlled visitor access they will give you some pass and only when you show that pass they will allow you to go inside correct so there is a controlled visitor access and sometimes a responsible employee should escort all visitors okay so if let's say some some of the relative says i want to go and see that patient then a doctor must accompany them or a nurse must accompany them or a hospital staff will accompany them so even if you are talking about a corporate company the same thing whenever a visitor is coming in there has to be one person escorting that other person the visitor in the organization next controlled single point entry an architect while designing the hospital may have kept 20 doors for the hospital that is 20 different ways you can enter the hospital but they will always close the 19 different entries and they will keep only one main entrance so when you go through that main entrance every time they will check you okay that is called as controlled single entry point even when you go to all the shopping mall what do they do you know when you take your car inside they will stop the car then they will you know check that car 
So there is only one place you can actually enter and there is only one place from where you actually exit. This is also a physical access control. Next, we are talking about security guards. Again, so if there is somebody who is trying to barge in or you know break into the hospital, there is a security guard who will protect. Next, you can have something called as dead man door. Now, what is this dead man door? Dead man door means, okay, so I'll put it like this. Say, you have one pass, you have one pass. Now, dead door is automatic. So there is no security guard who is watching you. Okay, so in dead man door, what happens is there are two doors. Okay, this is door one and this is door two. Okay, so there are two doors, door one and door two. So what happens is when you open door one, there is door two. Now, for you to open door two, you are supposed to close door number one. Now, because of which, so imagine like this. So there is door one and then there is door two. Okay, so between door one and door two, there is only little space where one person can stand. So if I am one person and I have, so I open this door one, it opens. So I come inside and anybody following me cannot come inside because, because there is no space. So for me to open the second door, the first door has to close. So it ensures that only one person at a time enters the facility. Next is there is alarm system. What is this alarm system? So this banks in movies that you have seen, you might have seen that, you know, whenever some robbers enter the bank and they're trying to loot the bank, so there is one some emergency button and they press it and there is a siren and police will get to know. So this is a, again, it is a physical access control. Non-exposure of sensitive facilities. <clears throat> huh. So non-exposure of sensitive facilities means, let's say in the organization, there is one server room where some data are, some sensitive or some top secret files are located. So you should not put a board saying that, you know, top secret files, because if you're writing top secret files, that means you are, you're just attracting the attentions of everybody and saying that, you know, oh, this is something that you might be interested in. There is a top secret in this. So you should not mention those details. So if you understand this much physical access control, this is enough. Okay, next, let's talk about what are the various kinds of locks on doors in the context of physical access control? If you have any questions, keep putting in the comment box. Okay, so let's go to question number 11. It says, what are the various kinds of locks on doors in the context of physical access control? So what are the different types of doors that we have? There are actually so many types of doors, but these are the three doors what we are going to learn. Something called a cipher lock. So cipher lock is simple lock where there is a door next to that there is a number pad you put the pin whatever the password or the four digit pin what you enter the door will open for 10 seconds so you can go and again the door will lock another employee will come put his pin the door will open that is something called a cipher lock next one is bolting door bolting door is a typical key what we have to our house okay so it is a door a metal a key we put it inside the door will open we get inside okay now what is uh, what could be the possible risk? The risk could be if this key is duplicated, then there is a risk. Okay, somebody else also can open the door or else this is considered as secure. Next is something have, we have something called as electronic door locks. So it is not a physical door lock, electronic door locks. All in large hotels you find this, you just swipe, okay, and the door opens. So these, these are the electrical door locks, simple as that. So that is question number 11. Now, let us talk about Question number 12, write short note on physical identification media in the context of physical access control. Now physical access control, we discussed that how do you prevent humans from entering into your organization? Humans in the sense, humans with the wrong intention from entering into your organization. First one is, you make them to identify themselves. You will make them to identify themselves. Now question is, how can they identify themselves? First one is they can identify themselves by having a pin. Okay, they have pin number. Okay, cipher lock we discussed previously that you enter four digit, then you can enter. So you can have either pin or you can have a plastic card. So if it is electronic good doors, then you can have a plastic card, swipe it in and the door will open. Now, instead of having plastic cards, you can also have identification badges. Now identification badges, uh, 
in all these bigger corporates whenever an employee enters they are supposed to show their badge to the security guard and the security guard will allow you inside so you are not swiping it anywhere you are just showing it to the security guard so you need so that you can identify yourself so very small question general point next question number 13 okay the question number 13 is write short note on logging in utilities in the context of physical access control now the question is what is logging in okay so log basically means record okay log basically means record now you might have seen if you are going to your friend's house okay who stays in an apartment so whenever you go inside the security guard will stop you and he will say bhaiya kidhar ja rahe ho okay so it's like where are you going so you say i'm going to to this room or you know this particular friend's house so they will ask sir aapka naam your name your mobile number they will take your signature the time everything they record so this is called log logging so logging can happen in two ways one is manual logging so there is a person who actually writes and then there is something called as electronic login now electronic login for example could be in some these days in the newer apartment what you actually do is Now you enter, you swipe your card. So even the visitor will have the card. So the system itself will record it. Okay, that is called as electronic logging. So why do we have this log? So that you get to know who entered your organization. Okay, so that is what a physical access control is. Either a security guard may write it, or every time you swipe your card, every time you swipe your card, a log is being created so that they can understand who entered the facility at what time. Clear with what is logging? Now, again, what are the various means of controlling physical access in the context of physical access control? So, how do you control some wrong person from entering organization? The question what we already discussed. Okay, previously we discussed this. Again, you can have video cameras, we can have security guards, you can have controlled visitor access, you can have bonded personnel. So, again, what is this bonded personnel? Bonded personnel means, see, in a shopping mall, you see all these people who are cleaning. you know this entire shopping mall throughout the day so these are not the employees of the shopping mall okay so these are a third party these are the third party contractors so i give contract to some contractor who will do entire cleaning of my shopping mall throughout the year for some x amount of money now what if these employees who come for cleaning does something wrong okay let's say one employee purposefully purposefully pushed my computer and broken that computer so now how am i going to recover this money so for which i need to you know make them sign a bond from either these employees or from this contractor saying that if your employee does something wrong then i am going to hold you responsible so that is what this bonded response the bonded personnel is then dead man door we studied the non exposure of sensitive details i said you are not supposed to write top secret files on any file and keep it away then computer terminal locks this is a physical locks so in organization sometimes what do they do is they physically lock the computer oh example could be when you go to this reliance uh, digital so they'll keep all these phones for the display you know your iphone for display your other samsung phones for display can you remove that phone and keep it in your pocket no why because it is connected it is connected to a terminal lock you try to pull it there is a siren okay so this is a physical access control then again controlled single point entry that is there is only one point in which you can enter the organization alarm system we took example of bank this much is enough for that question here 15th question outline the various categories of issues arising in relation to logical access controls so we will basically talk we will we'll talk about technical exposures asynchronous attacks and computer crime exposures that is there here one by one so they are talking about explain the various kinds of technical exposure threats in the context of logical access control now what is logical access control now logical access control means logical access control means listen so let's take the example of your phone now let us say this is your phone okay now there are two risk what you have for your phone one is physical access one is logical access now controls you can have a physical access control or a logical access control now what is physical access control that means you are not giving your phone to anybody 
so nobody will hold your phone so if they don't hold your phone then they cannot see what is inside so that is something called as physical access control okay but let us say let us say somehow somehow somebody got control of your phone or custody of your phone it could be in you know while you are traveling in train or somebody stole your phone okay or your friends when you are not there just took your phone now they have physical access they have physical access to your phone but can they see your data can they see open your whatsapp and see whom are you messaging or can they see open your browser and check your browser history can they do that or can they not do that you will say sir sir no sir it is not possible why because my phone has a password my phone has a password my phone has a pin my phone has a pattern lock okay or my phone has a fingerprint lock or my phone has a what face recognition retina recognition so only i can open my phone so these things are called as logical access control that is even if somebody has access that is physical access to your device he will still not be able to open your device because you have put logical access control you have put what logical access controls what are these logical access control these are the controls which are put in place so that nobody can access your data or nobody can access your network now when we are talking about logical access control so in this question be very careful what the question is question is explain the various kinds of technological exposures or threats in the context of logical access control now the first threat or the first risk that they are talking about is data diddling now what is data diddling data diddling means you are playing with the data for example so here there is a and here it is b now a sends message to b what is the message that they are say, saying you know come to play okay let's say these two are friends they are saying come to play at 5 pm so a is sending message to b saying that come to play at 5 pm now the message has been sent from a's phone to b's phone now let us say there is somebody called as c who is a hacker now if hacker tries to change the content of this message and replace it with 5 pm to 4:30 pm or 6 pm so this is called as data diddling now again you will say sir what is the risk in this i will tell you listen so now a is sending a message to b saying that send money to following account number this may happen most of the times all the commercial transaction happen this way only so a is a service provider b is the client a will say hey i have provided service to you here is the invoice this is my bank data now it is there in b now let us say if c can change the account number and put c's bank account number so b will send the money to whose bank account he will send money to c's bank account so this is something called as data diddling okay so that is one risk next we have something called as bomb so what are these bombs bombs means what happens is in bomb uh how do i put it in a very simple way if i have to explain you what bomb is let's say you download a file from the internet okay let's say you are downloading some uh, game okay so some game which actually requires you to pay some money let's say you are supposed to pay if you want some gun or some weapon you are supposed to pay let's say 100 rupees but you don't want to pay this 100 rupees so what are you going to do you are going to go to internet and you are going to find something called as modified apk some cracked version of the game okay or you want to use some software you want to use you know you let's say you want to learn photoshop so there is one famous software what we use is adobe sometimes you also call it as adobe photoshop but they say pay 20000 rupees you don't want to pay 20000 rupees so what normally people do they you know they try to find a cracked version cracked version says use it for free but what they don't understand is if why would somebody put a cracked version simply okay so in this cracked version what will be there so there will be a software and in that software there will be one hidden small software hidden small software now the moment you download this hidden small software to your computer this small software will 
damage your computer in you know there are various ways for example it will either delete all the files in your computer possibility one possibility two could be uh, it will upload all your details to the cloud to the internet so that somebody else can see it possible it possible possible so this small software sometimes known by different different names okay so we either sometimes we call it as uh, frozen hearts so now what is this frozen hearts frozen hearts basically when you download it nothing happens okay when you download it nothing happens but after one week after one week your system is gone okay after one week your system will be you know all the files will be deleted one sudden day that is something called we call it as frozen hearts same thing there is something called as worm this small software can be worm so again worm the main function of worm is to multiply itself okay so when you download let's say this small software is of just 1 mb then again it will keep on copying itself it will become 2 mb 4 mb 8 mb 16 mb so within few seconds or few minutes your entire system becomes you know full okay that is what worm does and worm is a type of malware okay so these are all the risk what you have again in bombs we have something called as time bomb similar to trojan hearts so what time bomb does is you download the software for one week nothing happens after one week your system is destroyed all the data is deleted now some we also have something called as logical bomb logic bomb doesn't do anything doesn't do anything unless a logic is triggered for example you installed adobe you are using photoshop let us say after one month you decide to uninstall adobe that time this bomb will go off and your entire system will be destroyed all the files will be corrupted all your data will be erased i am sure that one or the other times you are you know you have you might have experienced these things then we have something called as rounding down so these are all rounding downs salami technique these are all financial frauds okay these are financial frauds so what basically happens is in rounding down let us say somebody has kept some 3000 rupees deposit in your bank they have kept 3000 rupees deposit in your bank and interest for this 3000 rupees for a year let us say it comes to 32 rupees 54 paisa 32 rupees 54 paisa so system calculates this 32.54 as interest but you will only put 32.50 to the account of the customer and 4 paisa to the account of manager now customer will not notice because it is a small amount of money and you are just rounding it off okay so instead of 54 you are saying it is 50 this is something called as rounding down technique or rounding off technique then we have something called as salami technique so in salami technique what people normally do is let's say somebody has kept 50000 rupees in his bank account and he is given with the interest of let's say some 5200 rupees interest is given so actual interest also goes to his account only so in from his account you steal let's say some 50 paisa you steal so not just from one customer if you are having 1000 customer you will steal from 50 paisa from all on the customer so total how much money you are stealing from everybody it is 5000 rupees per day you are stealing so what is the difference between rounding down and salami in rounding down, down you are actually rounding the number but in salami technique you are stealing small same amount from everybody's account clear that is what rounding down and salami is next we have something called as trap doors now what are these trap doors now trap door means let's say that uh, your phone has a password your phone has a password for let's say it is a four digit pin and you enter a wrong password somebody somebody takes your phone and he knows that it is four digit number so he will try from 0000 system says wrong password he will try 0001 wrong password 0002 003 0004 000 so like this if he has enough time of one day he can try all the 10000 password okay then your phone will open to prevent this what will your phone system will do if the password is entered wrongly for more than 
for more than five wrong password more than five wrong password what will happen if they will say try after five minutes try after 10 minutes try after one hour so it they will slow down the system will slow down but but this device manufacturers keep a back door open they will keep a back door open so let us say that the police department to want to open your phone want to open your phone so they have this sophisticated software which will put you know put some codes which will open your phone in the first try itself so that is called a trap door now th there was one famous case of apple in usa so where fbi found out one phone of one terrorist okay and they gave a phone to apple and they said open it and give it to us or give us a code give us a trap door give us a back door entry in which we can open this but apple later refused saying that if you do that then tomorrow you are going to misuse it so there was a huge fight between fbi and apple then they say the news is not confirmed yet they say that the fbi was successful enough in finding the back door of apple so if FBI gets your Apple iPhone, they can still open it without the help of anybody. So that is what Trapdoor is. So, okay. So somebody wants to know what is this salami technique and rounding down. All right. I understand. So this is the confusion. Most of the students have it. So let me just uh, give an example to you so that you understand it in a better way. Okay. So let us say there is customer A, customer B, customer C and customer D. There are four customers okay so in a year interest is given like this 10 rupees 83 paisa 11 rupees 52 paisa 9 rupees 98 paisa then again you know 10 rupees 45 paisa again small number i am taking now what this manager is doing a manager is stealing money from everybody's account now he can steal from in two different ways one way is from a's account he will steal this three paisa he will steal here he will steal two paisa here he will steal eight paisa here he will steal five paisa this is called as this is called as rounding down or rounding off so you are actually bringing the number the last digit you are taking Okay, so it is not the same amount from all the account. It is 3 paisa from A's account, 2 paisa from B's account, 8 paisa from C's account, 5 paisa from D's account. This is called as rounding down technique. But in salami technique, what manager is doing is, from all the account he is stealing, let's say 20 paisa, 20 paisa, 20 paisa, 20 paisa. <coughs> this is called as salami technique. Okay, clear? You understood this? Now, one more question. Explain flowchart. Explain flowchart. Uh, hmm. This is third chapter. Flowchart does not come in third chapter. Okay, so flowchart, I believe it is already explained. It is already explained. It should be there in the other class videos. Okay. Okay. Next. There is something called as explain the various kinds of asynchronous attacks in the context of logical access control. Okay. So there is a, there is a 15 minutes video in YouTube only explaining in detail what is asynchronous at attacks in indigo learn so it is put out for free i suggest you to watch it but just to give you an idea about what is asynchronous attack asynchronous basically means asynchronous basically means which is not synchronous okay now what is not synchronous i'll give an example to you so let us say there is a and then there is b okay so a directly phones b okay in phone i'm talking okay Hello, how are you? So when I say, how are you? At the same time, B also can listen to the same thing and B will respond, I am fine. So this is something called a synchronous communication. At the same time, communication is happening. What, what is asynchronous? Asynchronous is, I am writing a letter to A. So it will take, let's say, three days to reach B. Then again, B is going to write a letter replying to me. Again, it will take three days. So here, communication is not synchronous. Here, the communication is asynchronous here the communication is asynchronous okay so now when the communication is synchronous 
there is you know there is a little less chance of any frauds for example if i say how are you if the other guy says you know i am home i will say what are you saying i did not ask where are you i asked how are you because it is synchronous communication but in asynchronous communication there is a high chance of you know fraud why because now a is sending letter to b saying that you know a is saying i am in some financial difficulty send me money to this bank account number but when the message is sent across earlier days in post it will take three days so when it is being sent in the post if somebody if somebody can stop that parcel open that parcel see what is there in the parcel then change the content of it then give it to b then this is something called as asynchronous attack now asynchronous attack does not only refer to communication which is happening in post so you may think that when i am when you are emailing to me when you are sending email to me you may think that this is synchronous but let me tell you even this is asynchronous okay maybe mail will take your physical post will take 3 days but but your email may take 2 seconds but this 2 seconds is also enough for a skillful hacker to change the content of your email okay so when i'm talking about asynchronous attack there could be a data leakage problem that is if i am writing a letter to somebody else a postman can read what is in this letter data leakage next one is subversive attack that is postman is not just reading what is there he is trying to change what is there that is something called a subversive attack so in here what is he trying to do he is trying to change the content he is trying to change the content now what is wiretapping wiretapping is you know a is calling b but at the same time at the same time somebody is tapping the wire you know you might have seen in all these movies they are trying to listen to somebody else conversation okay so that is something called as wire tapping can happen or something you know piggy backing can happen so piggy backing means let's say let's say one person is supposed to or is authorized to go to one facility okay for example i'll put it this way one operational theater one operation theater a doctor is allowed to go okay so if you are trying to go they will stop you so what are you going to do you are going to wear that white coat that apron what you are going to wear and when actual doctor goes you are trying to you will follow him so this is something called as piggybacking that is you follow somebody you follow somebody who has the permission to enter okay as a second person this can also happen physically also it can happen or it can also happen logically let's not get into the technicalities how does it happen if you want to know i want you to watch that video okay any question that you have okay now 18th question logical access violation can be done by many persons explain now normally when we talk about logical access violation now logical access violation remember it is not that you know somebody is coming to your company you know walking into your organization no logical access means somebody is sitting somewhere and trying to access your organization using internet simple way that is something called as logical access control sorry logical access violation okay now who can do this logical access violation so whenever i ask the student is a student the student normally says sir hackers are hackers no not necessarily it is not always that you know somebody is sitting in his basement wearing you know sitting in one dark room having one huge computer wearing one hoodie no not him logical access violation can happen from many people who are those first one is yes hackers simple next one is employees only can do it when employees realize that you know there is a bank which has so much of money in that bank or the company which has so much of money or information in the company your employees may only try to steal those information steal those. that also can happen next one is is personnel that is your information system employees and one employee is your normal employee who is working in the front desk who is working in the manufacturing segment sales segment that is one thing your is personnel you know the people who are supposed to actually protect your information system they may also try to uh, you know steal your information possible former employees this is very serious case that is 
one employee was working in your working in your organization you are not happy so what are you going to do you are firing him or let us say that you know because of covid all the organizations are cutting down their employees so you have fired 20 employees so your employee one employee is very you know angry on you he is like i worked in this organization for 20 25 years and suddenly one disease came and he has just fired me so let me teach them a lesson so what is he going to do he is going to put his id password open your computer you know organization database download all the data and leak it in the public possible possible even the biggest of the biggest organization suffer from logical access violation recently microsoft suffered it so their windows xp source code normally source code is very private very confidential in the organization that was leaked okay now it is available for public so anybody can see the source code so the highest richest company in the world only cannot protect themselves then think about the smaller organization then again end users can hack it okay they need not be hackers end users could be the users who can do logical access violation now a simple example could be i can give it like this say the the swiggy or zomato came with the initial offer saying that uh, if you are going to use it for the first time you will get 50 percentage off okay and they said use your email id what people did i'll tell you what my friends did so initially they had not linked it with your mobile but they said email id you put it first user email id you will get it for free so one friend of mine put one email id purchased food got 50 percentage off second he created one more email id got again 50 percentage off one more email id one more email id he kept on using 20 30 email ids creating email id does not cost you anything at the same time you will get 50 percentage off so this is a logical access violation you are giving an offer so that you can get more customer but the same customer is actually violating you using a weakness in your system so this can happen from even the end user as well okay it can happen from criminals it can happen from government it can happen from anybody okay any questions you have on this no okay <clears throat> let's take the 19th question the question is explain the logical access control measures under user access management now simple thing is whenever a user wants to access user wants to access something you will have some preventive measures for example user is supposed to put uh, let's say his password his id properly only if he puts his id and password properly he will be allowed access to the system or some employee comes to work once once he turns his computer on he's supposed to then that windows will open and it will say enter your password mac os will open and say enter your pass or password so unless you know the password you cannot access the system okay so the question is explain the logic access control measures under user access management now who is user so in your organization user could be your employees or your user could be your customers so when your employee is trying to log into your system or customers are trying to log in your system what are the logical access control measures that you are going to have first one is user registration first thing that what you are going to do is you are going to record the information of every user some questions like why and who is the user granted the access has the data owner approved by the access and has the user accept the responsibility etc are answered the deregistration process is also equally important a simple example could be let's say my office a new employee joins okay so i will give him one computer or one laptop and i will say you start working now his laptop will be connected to the server of the office so server is a place where all the customer data are located where all the customer data are located now so whenever a user is joining the organization i will ask okay let us say why are you coming to this organization somebody may say sir i just want to do one project for my college somebody may say i want to just understand how you know how corporate work or how a ca office work i want to do a training for one month somebody says i want training for three months i want training for one year so let us say somebody comes only for seven days or one week of training i don't want to give him a complete access of my server maybe i will give him a very limited access maybe one five six files what he can see 
now how can i do that first thing is i will register him i will i will create a user id i will create a password for him then i will give this user id password to him and i will say you can access the system so first step is i have to create a use, make a user registration without doing that if i say you know you can use the system nothing stops him from opening the server and deleting all the files because anyways he'll go after one week no so step one i have to make a registration of the user then once he leaves the organization i need to make him deregister so that you know after one year he can't use the same id and log into the system next one is privilege management this is very important now what is this privilege management now okay so let me tell you one thing so when i used to be a student and uh, so we had this itt the same thing what you have some i don't know what you call it some i but where you learn uh, this tally excel conducted by ca institute only so when i used to be student you know uh, i used to attend these classes and i wanted to uh, you know install one game okay so that some somewhere i felt classes were boring for some some portion of it some portions were really really excellent uh, really really good but one day i decided let me install one game and start playing so i connected my pen drive i started installing the game now i had access to the system they had given me user id password so i entered i, I had access but but once i clicked the game install they said you cannot install the game because you are just a user contact admin so this is classically what is called as privilege management so had the institute not done this privilege management not to limit all the other 30 students would have installed game and started playing so you cannot blame the user no you can simply say don't install game but user will not listen user is a kid who is 18 year old who is 17 year old he will not listen to you so you need to do this privilege management in your organization so that even if they want to do something wrong your system should not allow it so that is called as privilege management what is privilege who can do what in the system can they install a software can they not install a software all those things user password management i gave the example that one i is professional came and said 10 days every 10 days you change the password this should not happen or you know uh, some some software or some websites allows you to put only four digit password or you know even if you enter 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 it will accept it but this should not happen they should say you know some websites particularly banking website they will say use alpha numeric use capital use special character so this is all comes in password management because you cannot expect a 16 year old kid to know that you know he has to create a strong password so system should alert him every time he is creating a weaker password system should say change it i don't want that password review of user access right that is you are hiring an employee for the sales department next you giving him a promotion and you are sending him to let's say uh, manufacturing department now once he came in you registered him as a user for sales but now he is in manufacturing department now once he is in manufacturing department he should not have access to the customer details so every time you need to change their access okay this is one of the point so there is one question that is uh, sir please explain what is meant by api that is shrikant sahakari now okay see now api is not a part of the syllabus honestly but i understand that as a student uh, you see this word so many times so let me take one minute and i'll explain you i told you all the questions i'm going to answer so api basically means one software talking to another software simple that is what api is what is api one software talking to another software in an automated way simple example could be let us say you are trying to log into some website okay so there there i bet you have seen this login with gmail login with gmail now let us say you are trying to log into indigo learn website okay indigo learn website so in that website they they may give you two options you know i'm not very sure they may give you two options saying that login by entering your id and password or login with gmail okay if you have seen this option when you click login with gmail login with gmail now there are two softwares one is a gmail another software is indigo learn okay 
Now, whenever you are entering your Gmail ID and password, how will Indigo Loan know you are putting a correct password or not? So, Indigo Loan software will ask Gmail software saying that whether this ID password is correct. So, Gmail will say, yes, it is correct. So, what is actually happening? These two softwares are talking to each other. Indigo Learn and Gmail are talking to each other. So, this is called as EPI. Okay. So, when Indigo Learn says, hey, whether this ID password is correct or not, we call it as in a very technical term, we call it as API call. So, Indigo Learn is making an API call to Gmail and Gmail is responding to API call saying that it is valid. If it is valid, you will give them the access to the website. That is what API is. Sir, I have doubt data warehouse. So, Berka, what I suggest you is quickly go and watch after this class, the previous class video. There I have explained what data warehouse is. So, I don't want to repeat the same thing. So, I believe that you have not watched that video. There I have explained what data warehouse is. Next, explain the logical. This is the a couple of questions I will take for the next 10 minutes. Then we will uh, finish it off. Next, explain the logical access control measures under user responsibilities. User responsibilities. Now, one is, see, user responsibility means you need to do a proper user awareness. Okay, saying that you should use the strong password. You should use the password more than 8 to 10 characters. You should use alphanumeric. You should use capital letter and small letters. You should use special character. So this organization has to train their consumers, users, employees. Okay, that is one thing that you can do under logical access control when it comes to user responsibilities. Because it is not always the responsibility of the company. Sometimes it is the responsibility of the user as well. That is point number one. Second point is unattended user equipment. They are saying, they will say that don't keep your computer open. So in most of the offices, what I see is, so employees will be working in their computer. So they have their ID, they have their password, they put it, they start working. Suddenly they will get some call. Suddenly they will get some call. Now let us say this call they are getting from the, the Zomato guy who has come and who is standing outside the factory or who is standing outside the company and he, you know, he is not able to come inside. So employee will say, wait, 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 I'll come to the entrance. So what he's going to do? He will leave his system and he will go to the entrance gate, collect his food parcel. Now for five minutes, this guy will not come back. So his computer is open for five minutes. So anybody, even the, uh, you know, the peon can come, even office boy can come and access five minutes and do some damage to the organization. So organization must aware or organization must inform the employees saying that no computer should be left open. So if you want to go out, press Windows L, lock the computer so that office boy comes and press enter, enter, enter thrice, the system should not open. Got it? That is what unattended user equipment is. Any other questions? Okay. So let's take up one more question. Probably this is last question which I will take up. Yeah, this is last question. Then other questions we can see in the next class. Explain the logic ac logical access control measures under network access. So we are, see, one thing which I want you to understand in EIS, you need to know, you need to know what exactly are they asking? So in this question, they're only asking about network access. So how are you going to protect your network? How are you going to protect your network? So I'll give one very simple example. And this is very, very dangerous. So a lot of officers, a lot of officers have Wi-Fi in that organization, okay? Have Wi-Fi in their organization and their server is connected to the Wi-Fi, okay? The server is connected to the Wi-Fi. Now, simple example could be, say, I have my laptop, okay? So I am teaching using my laptop. Now this laptop I can use to connect it to my office server because my office server and my laptop I can connect using Wi-Fi. Now let us say some, some client comes to my organization, to my office and he says, sir, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I want to make some payment. I want to make, I want to make some tax payment, but my mobile network is not working. Can I connect your Wi-Fi? Now, 
most of the chartered accountant will say why not why not please connect it and they will put password and give it to them so now understand understand how risky this is somebody some customer has access to my wi-fi so you will think that the only damage he can do is downloading some movie or some song no the moment he has access to your wi-fi he also has access to your office server that is he can use his mobile phone to see your tally data he can use to see your pdf files word excel files everything people don't even understand it okay so this is where that is where we have the subject this is where we have the subject where we are explaining explain the logical access control measures under network access your client comes and says give us a wi-fi password don't give the office wi-fi you create a hotspot from your mobile phone and give it to him simple as that okay so this is what we are going to study one is policy on use of network services so whenever an employee comes whenever so this is one you know i was shocked when i saw this so once i was on audit of a bank so this bank software okay this is not a nationalized bank but a smaller bank so what this employee was doing is he was so he has kept his browser open so in one window he has this banking application running in the other window he has his facebook running okay so in the lunch break he is op operating his facebook and then the working officer he is using his banking software dangerous so an organization which has lot of sensitive data should train their employees saying that whenever you are working office laptop or office network use it only for the official purpose don't log in your into your facebook that is policy and use of network services should be communicated to them because unless you tell them don't expect them to learn on their own point number 1 next point is enforced path now enforced path means you are telling your employees saying that look if you want to connect to any external services you should use these softwares you should use these networks now i'll give very simple example now these banks okay now bank i always give the example of bank because it is super uh, you know it is it is there in a super protected environment now what basically happens is bank has their own email they don't operate in your gmail they don't operate in your gmail outlook yahoo nothing they they have their own private emails so if you want to send any document to them you are supposed to send it to their private email now question is should a bank manager be permitted to open his private email in the banking system answer is no so the bank people should tell them if in case you want to open your private emails then you should use this computer you should be connected to this wifi not to the banking wifi that is what you need to tell them so enforced path you need to tell them if you want to use this use this computer use this wifi not the main bank wifi next one is segregation of network again segregation of network same way so a communication could be private communication or it could be a general communication general communication could be you know normal emails saying that you know we have not received the files we have not received that we have not received this this is all private public then there can be sensitive communications there can be sensitive communications now this sensitive communication should happen by using something called as vpn again how security is we don't know okay but they say use vpn virtual private network now security of network services the technique of authentication and authorization policy should be implemented across the organization's network these are all things if an employee is sitting somewhere and trying to do work from home and for him to do work from home he is trying to connect to the organization's network he has to put his id he has to put password now only the authorized person should be made to enter your network simple next you are supposed to have a firewall now what is firewall initially i said i will talk now this is what firewall is i'll explain it to you see firewall is a combination of hardware and software which will protect the organization example could be when i am setting my computer of my employees what do i do is i establish or i set up a firewall and i will say what are the permitted websites that people can open for example let's say 
I will say all the websites which have, which are other than, you know, income tax website, GST website and MCA website should not open. So any website, if an employee is trying to open, if any website an employee is trying to open, which is not an income tax website, which is not a GST website, which is not an MCA website, the browser will say, you know, this website is blocked by your firewall. So why am I doing this? Because I don't expect a 17 year old, I don't expect an 18 year old to understand how risky it is to open a Facebook page or how risky it is to watch IPL match during the office hours can be risky for the office network. He will not know. So I have to establish firewall in my organization. Next, I need to have encryption. Now encryption, this is one crazy thing which happens. So now, whenever I log into a website, I put my username, I put my password. Now, how will the my how will system know that this ID and password is correct? Now I'll put it like this. You open, you open your browser, okay? You open your browser and uh, you open Facebook. So Facebook, what do you put? You put your ID, put your password. Now the question is, how does Facebook know that this is the correct user ID and password? So they have a database of all the user IDs and all the password. So whenever you are, uh, you know, whenever you are putting username and password, your browser will send a request to the Facebook database and the Facebook database will tell whether that ID password is correct or not. Okay. Because they already have a copy of your ID and password. So if your password is different from the password, what is with them, then it will, they will say it is an incorrect password. Now that means there is one computer in which all the ID and password is stored. Now let us say somebody hacked into that. He will get access to all the user ID and password. So to prevent this, what do they do is they encrypt the password. Encrypt the password means, let us say if your password is, you know, password one, two, three, let's say this is your password. They will not store like this. They will encrypt it using some software. We call it as some encryption algorithm. Your password will be stored something like this. E1, 2B, HQ, so on for let's say some 64 characters, this password will be. So even if somebody gets this 64 bit character, he will not know that your password is password123. Okay, so this you can do by encrypting your password. So this is called as password in clear text. So a user can see and say, oh, this is the password. And this is something called as cipher text. We call this as cipher text. So even if somebody see, he can't guess what is the actual password. So next, the last point for today's class is that is callback devices. Now, what is this callback device? Callback device basically means, I'll give an example so that you understand what this callback device is. See, once I went to a hotel, okay? So once I went to a hotel and the hotel receptionist said, so I asked for a, uh, you know, Wi-Fi password. I asked the Wi-Fi password in that hotel. So they said, sir, you, uh, I don't have to tell you what the Wi-Fi password is. I don't have to tell you what the Wi-Fi password is. You go to your room, you connect to the Wi-Fi. They will ask your mobile phone number, give that mobile phone number and automatically you will get the access. So they're not giving any password to me. So what will I do? I'll go to my room and I'll connect to the Wi-Fi. I'll connect, let's say this is the Wi-Fi and I connect to it. Now, the first question they will ask is, what is my mobile number? So I'll say my mobile number is so and so and so. So then they will send me a, OTP. So the moment I enter the OTP, my phone directly gets connected to the Wi-Fi. Now, the reception guy could have actually given me the password, but if he would have done that, what would happen? See, first thing is, if I know it, even their employees also may know it, correct? Because to tell me, he should know it first. So if he knows it, he use hotel Wi-Fi. Sweepers may use it, cleaners may use it. The person who is there in the neighbor build, neighboring building of the hotel may also use the same Wi-Fi. So they don't want them, uh, you know, everybody to use it. So what do they do? They say every time a user or every time a user comes to or a client comes to that hotel, this receptionist will enter my number in their system. My number is already there in the system. So as a user, when I go to my room and try to connect it, 
their system already has my mobile number. So they will say, yes, this is the same user. He'll be staying there for one day. So I have to give access of only for one day. Okay. So what actually is happening now when I'm trying to log in using my mobile phone, my mobile phone is communicating with their server. And that server is calling back my device using OTP. Okay. So this is called as callback devices. It is a super technical topic, but don't worry. If you know this much, more than enough. Sir, firewall sometimes also work as a detective control. Uh, okay, so firewalls basically we use it as preventive control. So it will not allow you to access that website. Okay, so it is not detective. It is prima facie. It is a preventive control. It will not allow you to control uh, connect. But but there are ways in which we can. Uh, what do I say? Jump the firewall. That is bypass the firewall. You know there are so many websites you can use it. I'm not supposed to teach all those things. So I'm not going to teach it, but yes, you can bypass this firewall. But when you bypass this firewall, there are possibilities that by your firewall will detect that you have bypassed it. That is where, yes, you're right. Firewalls can sometimes also be used as a detective control. Any other questions? If you don't have any other questions, then I will close the class for the day. I'll wait for a minute. Any questions you have? So when is the next class? The details will be put up. Uh, it is two days, I believe. Um, not tomorrow, I guess day after tomorrow. Is the next class. The chapter three part is available. Yes, it is available. It is part one, it is available. When the antivirus shows access to the site is blocked, that means it is a detective control or a preventive control. It is a preventive control. Preventive. Because you don't get to access only. So it prevents you from accessing it. Okay, so all right, let's meet up in the next class and discuss, complete this chapter, okay.